Are you right now at the verge of giving up on life? Do you battle condemnation and feel inadequate? Is there a part of you that doubts whether God truly loves you? Would you like to better comprehend God's love for you? Life is full of uncertainties, but in God, there is an assurance of a beautiful future. Be inspired as you receive God's word that will stir up faith and confidence in the love that God has for you. Join us today on The Covenant Light. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I worship and I honor you. Wherever you are, just go ahead and worship him. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Oh God. All my life you have been faithful. <laughs> All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, my God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness. Of God, I love your voice. You will lead me through the fire. Lord, I work in the darkest night. Lord, I honor you. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived. In your goodness, oh God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Mare boko zata, lehe kuda bala mande lehe de boko. Reke boso boko mo boko sheteri abala mai. Your goodness is running after, after me. Lay down and surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Karara mahaka shatala brahaya. Malele bosha karadiya. Ele nondre gesudo baya. Male no shakatai. Male no sora vida. Male no sora vida. Male no sora vida. Male probo dos potoria vala mahaya. Oh Jesus. Every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, my God. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Father, we come boldly before you today and we just worship and bless you. Thank you, Lord. I honor you and I exalt you and I magnify you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty and precious name. Amen. This morning, we're praying about resources. We're praying about resources and the scripture that God put in my heart is Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah chapter 60. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. See how it's connected to shining. It's connected to that. It's resources for the assignment. So it goes on to say in verse 4, Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. So immediately it says, Arise and shine, the glory of the Lord is in upon thee. It begins to talk about things gathering. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thy eyes round about, verse 4, and see, all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from afar, that's discipleship, and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see, when these things begin to happen, thou shalt see and flow together, and your heart shall fear and be enlarged, because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto you. The forces of the Gentiles, the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. The multitude of camels shall cover you, the dromedaries of Midian and Ephah. All day from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Please hear those words. They shall, not they might or could. They shall. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto you. The rams of Nebaioth shall minister to you. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me. And the ships of Tashis first, to bring thy sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified thee. The sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their king shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, that's at the cross. In my favor have I had mercy on thee. Therefore, thy gates shall be continually open. That is your businesses. They shall not be shut day or night, that men may bring unto you the wealth of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in verse 13, he tells us why. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee the fir tree, the pine tree, the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will make the place of my feet glorious. It's all about the assignment, folks. It's all about the assignment. This morning I sense God bringing us into this place of abundance and we're going to be praying about resources. There are five areas that we're going to be praying about resources. We're going to be praying about resources in platforms. Platforms. Your candlestick, where you are meant to be. Sometimes you think you are where you are meant to be, but the cloud has moved. While you were supposed to be in one location before, now you're supposed to be in another location. As we pray it in the spirit, it will open up. Platforms, locations, vocations. Some of you are in jobs and places of work that... You ought to have started your own business or be in another place or rise in that place that you are. So locations, vocations are platforms. Then there's prudence, which is wisdom. Divine instructions is also a resource. 
people are also resources. That's the third one. Possessions. That's where finances come in. Abundance of the sea. Everything we need for the assignment coming to us. And lastly, power. The gifts of the Spirit. The enablement of the Holy Ghost. The gifts that you've been given. The power of God in you is a resource for the assignment as well. And we're going to be praying about that. Hallelujah. So go ahead as we pray right now. You just pray. Pray. We share. We are sharing the same prayer time. But you make it your prayer. Don't just listen in. You pray. Glory to God. Because I'm going to be praying. And if you're a leader, you go ahead and pray for yourself and for those you serve as a leader. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come boldly to your presence. I come boldly in your presence. I come boldly to the throne of grace. I come in the name of Jesus. I come under the banner of the blood of sprinkling, the blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, the blood that calls me righteous. Oh, la hostility. I come as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I come as a son to his father, as a slave to his Lord, as a servant to his master, as a man to his God. And I worship you. And I honor you. I acknowledge your leadership. I acknowledge your awesomeness. Be magnified in the name of Jesus. I come recognizing that I am an unprofitable servant. And so I come only on the premise of righteousness today. And in the name of Jesus, Lord, I, I demand the resources according to your word. They shall be gathered to us. I demand the resources for the assignment. I demand the resources of platforms, of people, of possessions, of prudence and wisdom and the resources of power that you have already given us. I demand their manifestation. I demand that they show up in my life, in the lives of my family members, in the lives of my partners, in the lives of those that call me their father and those I serve as a leader. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I yield to you. Help me to pray as I should concerning this. In Jesus' name, and guide me and bring interpretation of the things that I speak in other tongues as I pray. That I may believe and walk in faith and clarity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ere nombre dilia makora braga da jagadege borobo shikata le kokra nandege suto paria makuru braga dejga le nonze le nonzia le nonzia le nonzia le nonzia mazu prege dosha rebos kora nandege sida barama yekata le kora bashande le gredosa palos metoria balamande gele dina makosha enzolo pragadia enzolo prege dos malianandre Lord, I have not come to make you give. I have not come to convince you to give. I have not come to get you into the notion of giving. I came to demand what you have given. Earth, give up what is ours. Give up platforms for me, for my family members, for my partners, for those I serve as a leader. Those that call me their father, give up our platforms. I speak to the four corners of the earth. I speak to this world. I speak to hell. And I speak in the name of Jesus. And I speak to all of heaven. In the name of Jesus, give up our platforms. Give up. Our possessions. 
give up the people for this assignment for the assignment that God has given us give up the platforms for the assignment give up the people for the assignment give up the wisdom for the assignment give up in the name of Jesus let the power flow for the assignment Iman kalamande Engrino skiriando stiriano copra diga la maco sheketeria bakuru makasenda elo son trege boson trege boson trege boson taria balamakura baya mako progodo bose kere boko soto robo bo shataya mako pradege boso ramakashanda erege boso korobo gizelia makura basande i grande gebo robo sikarabaye makro bodo sokoro bo shikataya makra basande legredia mahale grenos que en un hombre gajida mal y en hombre galamonte que en hondo robos quería mal y en hombre hactel y en andre que suso me reno coso torra baye macro bodos que re barra gados que re día el sondra galamaste que re nash caranan de que sudo ba maclon engredosa para día osha 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 le hexta palos que le groste el zon Traxen, Trectosa, Valginos, Vrenongradia, El Zoctelia, Malugresto, Maligresuto, Maligranonzi, Malugranehia, Malugrenombroskeledia, Malugrenombreskeledia, Malugrenombreskeledia, Malusastiza, 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 Malusheta, Malusheta, Malucrasto, Malucrasto, Pragosketelia, Pragos Cotoria Balamande, El Zonondre Gejelipra, Licramondo Robos Keredia, Marebos Coradila Agron de Gesulo Brate, Le Cronon de Gejelibra Mahaya, Licandolo Procotoselia Mahashka, Elos Cora Andele Gren Hosvadi, Os Vregedos Kerian Ande Glea Concra di Gabasque, Lencro do Bosqueredia, Marabagasha Catara Bahaya, Macro bodos coran andele gebrosta, lima co pradia la mahashka, lenons enda, lenox cadia, lenox crombra diga, maco pradea le mosque, le moco pradaga bosa, reboso coradina mahaya, macashana di, macashana di, macashana di, macashana di, maco pradea. Mako pradaga bo se kere bo koso toro bo gosha Mako robo si karaba ba 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 kashata Leke bo so koto, 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 leke bo so koto Lekra ba 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 ra ba ga bo se kere bo koso toro bo gosha Rama ga ba rege bo si karaba ye ya Rege bo so ro bo koso toro bo gosha Makara ba ga dege bro go do bo zi galaba ye ya Ekele bro Godo shakara maya, ekrege boso koro bogo zogo doria malahanda, engrege do soria bakuru mashanda la braga dea, ekrege de boso kotora baya, i candele progodo de gria non drage sudobra, macre bodo so kora maye, macro mo so pranande geledia, maco pronde gebo sudaba, macre pondo robogo skeredia, angre lo scora nande geledia mahakashanda. Male Krenondre, Mele Koski, Melo Koski, Malo Kozito, Male Gebosha, Mele Krenonde, El Sona Dia, El Sona da Crando Bradilia, Mangre Bodos Keredia, Mangre Bodos Keredia, Mangre Gede Borobo Shikarabala Mahaya, Makarabagabala Mahashka, Makre Bodos Okoro Boshikarabaye, Makro Bodos Serianande, Ele Krenonde Gelia Mahashka, Leno Koshapa, Leno Koshapa, Leno koshapa, leno koshapa, leno koshapa, le mokora bahasha, makora bagasala makose prodogo bosha, le masande le brogo doskeria, le magrade gevoro mokose tere bogoshada, mangra bala makoria bala mahaya, makre vodoso kora bayeke toza, e granonde lia gramahashka, lemposka, lemposa, lenkazo, ligazma, legizma toza, bala mashka. Balamashka, Balamashka, Lehekoza ba, Makezoto Porobogo Serianande, Ikande Lebrogodia, 
Macrenondo Zopra Diga, El Dozo Maha, El Dozo Maha, El Dozo Maha, El Dozo Makora Bahaya, Makora Bahaya, Makora Bahaya, Mako Pradaya, Mako Pradaya, Mako Pradaya, Macrebodoske Rebodoske Rebodosko Robadia, Mambrogodo Sharamande Lebroska, Mandrege Bosula Mahaya, Mandre Lobo Sula Mahaya, Mekro Lobo Sondo Robogo Shanda, Endrege Bosondo Robogoria Mahaske, Macrobodo Seria Mandolo Broshka, Lemokora Mahaya, Makestiza, 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 Makestoja, 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 Makazitobra, Makezolobra, Makerebosha. Mare Bogodosa, Mara Bashanta la Braye, I candele Brogodosha, I candele Brogodelia Maha, Makora Mashanda, Makora Mashanda, Macrevenon de Lia Bragalobos Corabadea, Ecredo Goboso Corobo Shakataya, I Makora Masandeli Gamosa, Mandelia Maha Kere Brogodobosha, Makere Brocoto Zeleke Bodoso Gobosha, Limaka Maka Makomoso Komokoto Porobo Cate, Cateke Bia Mangoro Bogo. Sikala Maya, Makala Braga de Gebrege Dosha, Lemokora Brahaya. I hear the Lord saying to tell you to write down the things that are coming to your heart, write down the things that is showing you, even if they look uh, 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 ridiculous. Write down, some of you just saw yourself in places. God just told me, said, tell them to write down the things that I'm showing them. Some of you just saw yourself with some things, some possessions, some platforms. Some of you have instructions, prudence, that, that's wisdom coming your way already and write them down. Some of you are, are seeing yourself uh, uh, with certain people, write that down. He said, everything I'm showing you are coming to pass. They are coming to pass. They are coming to pass. Kelele pora mahaya, mereke boso kora baladia, rehe kora ne mondo roboche kere dia la mahasha, rehe kora braga dele greno hos kora manda, in tala tala tora kate kete reke tosokotoria bala, andolo brogo dosha, lam braga dia mahashka, lam braga de la makora mahaskera nande, el dona mangre dos brodge gelia nondre geshida ba, mako pradia la mahaske telia, malo kronde gebre nonde gelia nahashka, makele nondo roboske redia mahakesh talamande, mako pranete gele dia. Some of you, that piece of paper that you are writing those things on, as is something you are going to refer to so many times. Huh? That very piece of paper, uh, some of you, I'm, ten, I'm, I'm speaking by the Spirit of God. I see you 10 years, 20 years down the road bringing out that paper and it becomes something that is referred to, something that shows up over and over again in your story and you talk about how these things have come to pass. Mahi Kalebo Sokora Mandea and it's not just now that we are praying, not just now that we are praying because as, as we pray in the Spirit, God begins to bring interpretation of the things you are speaking and as they come, write them down. It may be down the road, it may be on your way to walk, it may be later in the evening, but things will begin to rise up. Male Keboso Tora Bayeke Levrenonda Shala Makora Pashala Makora Bagasete Rebogosha Marabakale Brogodose Karamande Rekeleboko Sotarabaye Makrabada Shandala Bragadabasha Mangrabados Kora Bayekele Brogodosha I Kaleboso Kotoria Balamande Eglenondre Gesida Baka Makora Bashantelia Bramande Endo Robogoso Kotoria Balamakura Bashanda Endrege Boso Krenonde Geledisma Le Kora Bahaya Le Krobodos Keranande Eldo Madiglia, Nangre, Doscora, Gradege, Brogola, Granazi, Glenongra, Delia, Nacrato, Pragalia, Male, Socota, Paramande, Tepronde, Gebrononde, Macrononde. But there's something so strong about writing these things down. The Holy Ghost is dealing with me about saying it over and over again. Write them down. Write them down. Not necessarily right now, but as He gives you. A picture in your spirit a platform rising up ridiculous yes you see yourself standing by presidents ridiculous yes you see yourself shoulder to shoulder with the greatest of ministers ridiculous yes but write it down write it down somewhere 
Mahiga Mbroko Derianda Galamo Koreana. Platforms, people, instructions coming your way. God is speaking to you about some depths of the flow of his power, gifts of the spirit. And he says to you, I see you walking and I've called you to operate and minister with this capacity and that capacity and the the gifts of the spirit. Write it down. It may not be happening now, but write it down. For it shall come to pass. Malie no ho comas que la nande, le no ho se valima cosa valima coria bocora maha que bosca, le cora maha shanda la braye, ma cora maha skeria nande, el sona gande le proctese liga, macro bodos que la nande, e crenon de shida ma cosiria, ma cosiria, ma cosiria, ma cosiria, ma cosera, ma cojana, ma coseteria, ma cobrananga, ma cobrenosia, ma cobarito, ma co. Bregeduzia, Macrononde, Macrononde Gelia Mahashte, Lekebora Mahashataya, Mako Pragada Sandala Brayea, Mako Prodogobosi Kataya, Macro Vodoske Ranande Gesida Baha, Mako Shandala Bayea, Mako Pragdalia Mako Zevrenone, Erenanga Diga Boria Makuzeve, Maku Pranige do Bosco Teria, Maku Brenongo Doseli Maka, Make Brononde Gelia Mahakoja, Mako Branande Gelia Naha. E che sosa, e che sosa, e che luz velicra non de che si daba, ma copre non de che le dia maha. Oh, Jalagashka, oh, Jelianask, oh, Jelianask, oh, Jelianask, alla mahan de le greno hostere non de che se libra hatte, pro deliana mahane, le nomocora braha, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south. In the name of Jesus, platforms come forth. Platforms for the effective communication and fulfillment of our assignment come forth. People for the effective fulfillment of our assignment come forth. Poor and Aaron, Aaron, Angren, Umbra, Delia, Cobra, the power of God. For the effective fulfillment of our assignment, come forth, be manifest. We walk in the fullness of the power of God in our lives. Wisdom and direction, we walk in the fullness for the effective fulfillment of the call of God. Iman seli protegeliaman de geladina mahaya. Marebo shakaria balaman de legredosa. Leheko rabahaya. Marabashana dia malegre non de geledina ma axto jo bragedilia malegre non de gesida ba malegre non de gesida ba malegre no hosh kara dia la mahande remokora pratega la braha marege de gele brohosha lord we give you praise we give you praise for you are glorious and worthy of my praise you're the land upon the throne maraboho belebre no hosga legre de borro bohoska radai and on to you I lift my voice in praise you're the land Upon the throne, la la bahai, la 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 braha, la boshe, reno hoso kora bala mahai, ina nene mo kora brahai, reno ngre di la mahai, le mo kopra di. Give him praise, somebody. Give him praise. Worship him. Thank you, Lord. We receive. See, the place of praise is the the place of it is done. The place of praise is the place of faith. The place of praise is where you settle it inside of you that it is done. Glory to God. Oh, Harabada Satala Baha, Malegrenon de Geladi, Yodele upon the throne. 
Lord, I declare your word says in Mark 11 and verse 23, Whosoever will say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things which he says will come to pass, the things which he says will come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. I believe that the things which I say come to pass, and so I have whatever I say. I boldly declare, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, sin has no power over me. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. I'm risen with Christ, so I seek those things that are above, where Christ is. I give my mind to the things that are above and not to the things that are on the earth, for I have died and my life is hidden with Christ in God. I have put to death my outward inclinations and my old man, the sin-prone personality with all its tendencies and desires, has been nailed to the cross with Jesus. Therefore, my old sinful nature has been neutralized. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I walk in the Spirit. I do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Rather, I'm constantly walking in love, in peace, patience, kindness, joyfulness, benevolence, faithfulness. Glory to God. Meekness and self-control. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God dwells in me so I am not in the flesh but in the spirit oh hallelujah I am not under the law but under grace so sin does not have dominion over me I've, I've been freed from all bondage to sin and I've become a servant of God and of righteousness I produce fruits unto holiness and everlasting life I am strengthened in my inner man by the presence and supply of the Holy Spirit. I accept the call to the ministry of reconciliation. I dedicate my life to the mission of Jesus that men be saved and come into a knowledge of the truth. I'm anointed with burden removing, yoke destroying power to preach good tidings to the poor and the afflicted, to bind up and heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison and the eyes of them that are bound. I'm anointed to preach and proclaim to them that mourn that the period of God's favor has come and that God's vengeance is upon his enemies, the hosts of darkness. I bring joy to all who mourn in Zion. I give them beauty for their ashes, the oil of joy for their mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Jesus himself is walking with me in this confirming his word with signs following as i minister the gifts of the spirit are always in manifestation as the spirit wills i have abundant opportunities to minister doors of ministry are constantly opening for me the lord god has given me the tongue of the learned and i speak a word in season to him that is weary and men long to hear me they long for my words like the farmer for the early rain God's hands are straight to heal and signs and wonders are done by the name of Jesus in my ministry. I'm a faithful member of my local assembly and of the body of Christ as a whole and I fulfill all my commitments in the house of God. I'm zealous for good works. I am constantly praying for and reaching out to those around me with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As my years on earth increase, so does the fruit of my ministry, increasing souls that have been won to my Lord and are being discipled. By reason of God's love that is, abides in me, I declare boldly that I endure long and I am patient and kind. I am never envious nor boil over with jealousy. I am not boastful or vainglorious. I do not display myself haughtily. I am not conceited, arrogant, or inflated with pride. I am not rude or unmannerly. I do not act unbecomingly. I do not insist on my own rights or my own way, for I am not self-seeking. I am not touchy or fretful or resentful. I take no account of the evil done to me. I pay no attention to a suffered wrong. I do not rejoice at injustice and unrighteousness, but I rejoice when right and truth prevail. I bear up under anything and everything that comes. I am ever ready to believe the best of every person. My hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and I endure everything without weakening. The love of God in me never fails, never fades out, never becomes obsolete, nor come to an end. My capacity to love never fails, never fades out, never becomes obsolete, nor come to an end. 
in the name of Jesus. I stand right now in the blood of the covenant, the blood of the, of the sworn oath. God's sworn oath to me. I pay heed to the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. I have respect to the covenant and I stand in that covenant. God has sworn to me and I stand in the oath of God and I declare concerning myself, concerning my family members, concerning my partners, concerning all who call me their father and those I serve as a leader, I declare in the name of Jesus that our families serve God together with us. I claim them for the gospel. Our fathers and mothers, our brothers and sisters, our in-laws and children are serving God in righteousness and truth and fulfilling his plan concerning them individually. Our houses stand. Our family members are not overthrown by evil because we are in covenant with Jehovah. We are tied us so we and our families live in joy and exceeding gladness. God's covenant with us covers all our family members. Just as Rahab's family were partakers with her of the covenant she made with the spies and came under the protection promised her in the covenant, so also our family members are partakers with us of our covenant with Jehovah. For God is not a respecter of persons. They walk in every blessing of the covenant. They are under the blood of the covenant and no harm can come to them. Our family and ourselves have more than enough for all good things we desire such that we are able to give to others. We walk in God's perfect will in marriage. Our mates and ourselves are discerning each other, discovering each other and complimenting each other. We have marriages that honor God and brings glory to his name. God's will is not divorce or a shattered home. Therefore, this shall not be our story. Rather, our spouses and ourselves shall keep growing in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and in our love for one another. Our hearts are knit together in love. Among all, we stand out before each other in the name of Jesus. We are increasing in favor before men. God makes our enemies to be at peace with us. He takes care of us and lights our way before us. God is with us and in us and his friendship with us is evident to all. We have a place among the honored elders. The young see us and step aside. Even the aged rise and stand in respect at our coming. Royalty stand in silence and lay their hands upon their mouths. The highest officials everywhere we are stand in quietness at our presence. All rejoice at what we say. All who see us speak well of us. For we help the poor in their need. The fatherless who had no one to help them. We help those who were ready to perish and they bless us. We cause the widow's hearts to sing for joy. All we do are just and honest, for we are the righteousness of God. We are as eyes for the blind and feet for the lame. We are as father to the poor and treat strangers with hospitality. We rescue victims from godless oppressors. We shall leave this world as an institution only after a long and marvelously good life. Everything we do prospers. Our businesses and channels of income are supernaturally empowered to prosper. Fresh honors are constantly given us and our abilities are constantly refreshed and renewed. By reason of God's wisdom operating in us, our opinion is sought by all, our bosses, our subordinates and our peers. After we speak, they are satisfied with our counsel. People of all races and nations long for us to speak as those in drought time long for rain. They wait eagerly with open mouths. When they were discouraged, we smiled and that encouraged them and enlightened their spirits. We told them what they should do and corrected them as their chief or as a king instructs his army or as one who comforts those who mourn. In the name of Jesus, I declare that our lives have been redeemed from destruction, from the ditch, from decay and from an abrupt end. Therefore, we and our households do not experience these things in any way. We cannot die the death of the wicked, but rather we live to declare the works of God. We dwell in God's secret hiding place under the covering of the Most Mighty. God is our place for shelter and protection against danger, strengthened against every attack. Surely he delivers us from every trap and protects us from every infectious disease and every plague. He covers us with his feathers and under his wings we trust. His word is our shield and buckler. We are not afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that fly by day. Nor are we afraid of the plagues of darkness, 
or the destruction, the corruption, the decay and sudden death that surprise and lay wait in the day, though a thousand fall at our side, though ten thousand are dying around us, the evil will not touch us. Only with our eyes will we see how the wicked are punished, but we will not share in it, for Jehovah is our refuge. The above all God is our shelter. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come near our dwelling. God's angels have been given orders concerning us to keep us in all our ways. They are effective. They bear us up. We do not dash our feet against the stone. Even if we meet a lion or step on poisonous snakes and even trample them beneath our feet, because we are loved by God, He will always rescue us. He will always bring us into new levels of greatness because we trust in His name. He answers when we call. God is always with us, even in trouble. He delivers and honors us. He satisfies us with long life and shows us His salvation. Our mouths are continually being satisfied with good things, such that our youth is continually renewed like the eagles. The life of God flows from the Spirit of God through our physical bodies, giving life to every cell in our bodies. The aging process in our bodies are drastically affected by this life. Our youth is renewed. God is our strength and our strength is increased. Even if the youths faint and are weary and the young men utterly fail, because we wait and trust in Him, our strength is renewed and we mount up with wings as the eagle. We run and walk long distances without getting tired or exhausted. Our bodies are increasing in stature, developing uniformly to maturity as it should. Every cell, tissue, organ and system of our body is functioning as it should and is well developed and well toned to look like the image God has of us. God looked at us and called us very good. We are very good physically and in every other way. Our faces are very good and looks it. Our bodies as a whole and every cell of it, I call and declare, is very good. We are continually in health. God is our healer and by the stripes of Jesus we are healed. He himself carried our sicknesses and bore our diseases. Therefore, for the rest of our lives, we will never partake of any sickness or disease. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's Son, the kingdom of light, where there is no darkness. Therefore, we do not partake in death of any form. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Because of our covenant with Jehovah, we are set on high above all the nations of the earth. We are empowered to prosper and we prosper everywhere we are. Our offsprings are empowered to prosper and they prosper. Our possessions are empowered to prosper and they are prospering. Everything we have is empowered to reproduce after its kind and is multiplied so that we have abundance. Our expense accounts, savings accounts and investments are overflowing with abundance. We are blessed at all times. The Lord, our covenant partner, causes our enemies that rise up against us to be smitten before our face. If they come against us in one way, they are scattered in many ways. We are empowered to have and do have all our bank accounts overflowing with more than enough. We are empowered to prosper and we prosper in everything we do. We are blessed in this land. Jehovah God is establishing us unto himself as holy. All the people of, of the earth, all the people of the earth, shall see that we are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of us. We are plenteous in goods. God opens to us his good treasure, even the heavens to give the rain unto our land in its season. God's blessing is upon all the works of our hands. We lend to many nations. We do not borrow. We may make the head and not the tail. We are always and everywhere above only in the name of Jesus. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places because we are one with Christ Jesus. Our children are honored everywhere. Wealth and honor are in our habitation. When darkness tries to overtake us, light comes bursting in. All goes well for us and we conduct our affairs with discretion. We are not overthrown by evil circumstances. We are in constant remembrance for good done by us and to us by God. We are not afraid of bad news nor live in fear of what may happen. For we are settled in our minds that Jehovah will take care of us. We shall see our desire upon all our enemies. Our horn is exalted with honor and the wicked shall see it and be grieved. 
and shall gnash his teeth and melt away and their desire for us shall perish. We give and it's given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men are constantly giving to us. We sow bountifully and we reap bountifully. Our needs are met, our bills are paid. We have plenty and more to sow and put in store through the anointing of Jesus. We prosper financially and materially. The yoke of lack and poverty in our lives has been destroyed, completely obliterated forever by the anointing of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We have abundance in all good things that our heart desires and we are blessed. Jesus has been made poor for our sake and by his poverty we have been made rich. God is making all favor and earthly blessing come to us in abundance so that always, under all circumstances and whatever the need, we are self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnished in abundance for every good and charitable donation. We have abundance and not lack. We walk in the anointing for too much and it is manifested in the abundance of our possessions. We have far much more finances and material things than we need such that we are a tremendous blessing to many. We have wealth beyond natural comprehension. We have mind-blowing abundance. We have moved from not enough all the way to more than enough. We are tight as the devourer is rebuked for our sake and all our affairs are watched over by God and the windows of heaven are opened on us. God is giving us insights, ideas and concepts for providing solutions to mankind's challenges, making us wealthy. Ministering spirits are working on our behalf, bringing us money and materials from far and near and enforcing our covenant with Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider, with Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace and wholeness, with nothing missing, lacking or broken, and our covenant with Jehovah Gemula, the Lord our compensation and our restorer. We have abundance. I declare boldly that we have the minimum, we all have the minimum monthly income that we have set this month in the name of Jesus. And angels go forth to gather for us and men are giving abundantly to us. Our net worth is ever increasing at such a rate that can only be attributed to God's working and not ours. We can never lack. Our broke days are over forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Keep on speaking. Keep on declaring. No matter what. Keep on declaring. For the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should rise and sleep night and day and the seed should spring forth and he knoweth not how. The sower soweth the word. Mark chapter 4. The sower soweth the word. And the kingdom of God is like a man that sows the word and rises and sleeps night and day. The seed springs forth. He doesn't know how, but he finds that he is standing in the very things he has been sowing, standing in the very things he has been declaring. You will stand in the things you've been declaring. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we ask you for revelation knowledge to dawn upon our hearts as we look into your word. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to listen to the, today we are looking at Galatians chapter 2, and we're going to read the whole thing, and then we're just going to now discuss it. So today I want to do it a little differently. I want us to read the whole thing so we, we can see it in context, then we now pick verses and discuss. Galatians chapter 2, the apostles accept Paul. Then 14 years later, I went back to Jerusalem again. This time with Barnabas and Titus came along too. I went there because God revealed to me that I should go. This is the New Living Translation. Those considered to be leaders of the church and shared with them the message I had been preaching to the Gentiles. I wanted to make sure that we were in agreement. 
for fear that all my efforts had been wasted and I was running the race for nothing. And they supported me and did not even demand that my companion Titus be circumcised, though he was a Gentile. Even that question came up only because of some so-called Christians there, false ones really, who were secretly brought in. They sneaked in to spy on us and take away the freedom we have in Christ Jesus. They wanted to enslave us and force us to follow their Jewish regulations. But we refused to give in to them for a single moment. We wanted to preserve the truth of the gospel message for you. And the leaders of the church had nothing to add to what I was preaching. By the way, their reputation as great leaders made no difference to me, for God has no favorites. Instead, they saw that God had given me the responsibility of preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, just as he had given Peter the responsibility of preaching to the Jews. For the same God who worked through Peter as the apostle to the Jews also worked through me as the apostle to the Gentiles. In fact, James, Peter, and John, who were known as pillars of the church, recognized the gift God had given me, and they accepted Barnabas and me as their co-workers. They encouraged us to keep preaching to the Gentiles while they continued their work with the Jews. Their only suggestion was that we keep on helping the poor, which I have always been eager to do. Paul confronts Peter. But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians, who were not circumcised. But afterward, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish Christians followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? You and I are Jews by birth, not sinners like the Gentiles, yet we know that a person is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus, so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ, not because we have obeyed the law, for no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ, and then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Would that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. Rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. For when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. That was the New Living Translation. And I wanted us to read the whole thing because sometimes as we go um, verse by verse, we sometimes lose the context. So um, going forward, at least for the next few days, we're going to be doing this. We go through the whole thing and then we highlight certain portions of it um, to, to discuss and to look at. And today I want to, um, it will, I hope that it will also help us uh, move faster so we can focus on the key things. This is Paul still continuing, like I said to us yesterday, the whole message of Galatians is to avoid what is generally called Galatianism, which is where a person is not exactly legalistic only, neither is he for grace, but 
trying to bring a balance between the two. People say, oh, you need to balance this grace message. No, balancing the grace message is not adding a little bit of the law. So Galatianism is this place where you are trying to live by the law and trying to live by grace at the same time. You have, you have a little bit of the law and a little bit of grace. And so um, Paul was writing to counter that because certain people had come to the Galatians and began to tell them that they still had to be circumcised, that they still had to live by the law, that they still had to, that they were justified by God on the basis of their works and their performance. And Paul wrote to counter that. That's how the, message, the, the book of Galatians was born. And so in this particular story, you have Peter who came around uh, to where Paul was and um, was eating with the Gentiles normally until some people came from James. James was considered the leader of the, the church in Jerusalem. He was a Jew. And they came from James and Peter began to adjust and act like he was not all the while flowing with the Gentiles. And Paul spoke up and addressed him. So we're going to start from verse 14 and learn and discover a few things here. So let's look at verse 14. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I said to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have discarded the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow the Jewish traditions? There's something very powerful here um, that we need to uh, see. And that is the fact that in the New Covenant, I want you to catch this, in the New Covenant, what is considered following the truth, or what, if you look at the original um, Greek, means walking in the truth, or obeying the truth. The, um, The King James Version of that particular verse, verse 14, says, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth. When I saw, Paul was saying, when I saw that Peter and his friends walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. So when you, in the old covenant, when you say walk uprightly, when you read about walking uprightly, the upright, this will happen for them. Uh, 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 they that walk uprightly, this and this and this will happen for them. When you read about it in the Old Covenant, understand what walking uprightly is in the New Covenant. Walking uprightly in the New Covenant is not the fact that you were able to keep all the commandments and it's not based on your works. Walking uprightly according to the truth of the gospel is doing what Paul was telling Peter he should have done. It is choosing to be justified not by works, but by faith. Peter was eating with the Gentiles. That was contrary to the law. But when some people came from James, Peter began to try and keep the law again. And Paul was saying, you are not walking uprightly. That's very powerful. In the Old Covenant... Peter would have been told, yes, you are walking uprightly now. Because in the old covenant, walking uprightly is keeping the law. In the new covenant, walking uprightly is putting your faith in Jesus for righteousness. And when you do that, you meet all the requirements of walking uprightly in the eyes of God. Peter didn't do that. And Paul said, hey, you guys didn't walk uprightly according to the the truth of the gospel. And so that's why you have statements in the Bible like the obedience of faith. Paul said we have been given a mandate for the obedience of faith. It's not obedience of the law. You know, if you shall, Deuteronomy chapter 28, we shall hearken diligently to observe, to do according to all these commandments. Then these blessings will come upon you. You see, in the old covenant, it was obedience to the commandments. In the new covenant, it's the obedience of faith. In fact, let's, let get, let's get that verse of scripture out. The obedience of faith. If you, if you ever, you know, in your own private studies, you can go uh, um, just type in obedience and faith into your Bibles. You look at Romans 1 verse 5. 
by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations. In, in 16 and verse 26 of Romans, it says, uh, 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 but, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the, uh, 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 of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. It is now the obedience of faith, not the obedience of the law. And that's why he said to Peter, hey, you are not walking uprightly according to the, uh, uh, um, the truth of the gospel. All right, so that's, that's very critical. And it continues that thought. If you look at verse 15, you and I are Jews by birth, not sinners, in quote, like the Gentiles. But yet, yet we know that a person is made right with God. Can you see what the, the point we're making again? Is made right with God by faith in Jesus Christ, not by obeying the law. And we have believed in Christ Jesus so that we might be made right with God because of our faith in Christ and not because we have obeyed the law. So now they are considered upright. So you can claim Deuteronomy 28, all of those promises in Deuteronomy 28. Before then, when I was, uh, uh, um, when I didn't understand these things, whenever I want to claim that I am the head and not the tail, I am above only and not beneath, no evil shall befall me, uh, uh, I'm blessed going out, blessed coming in, all of those promises, all of those promises in Deuteronomy 28. Whenever I want to claim them, my, the devil will just tell me, look at verse 1. If you shall hearken diligently to observe and to do according to all that is written. Have you done all? And then he will point out some mistakes I have made and some places where I did not fully perform all. <laughs> and you say, well, see, you cannot claim that blessing. You cannot be the head and not the tail. You cannot be above only and not beneath. You cannot lend to many nations and not borrow. You're going to have to borrow. You're going to have to... Because you did not keep all until I saw this, until I recognized that in the new covenant, walking uprightly is putting your faith in Jesus and, and, and living like Paul said, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live yet, not I, but, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live, I simply live by putting my faith in Jesus. That's what I do now. I put my faith in Jesus and that's the life I now live. All right, let's go on. That's the whole concept of the, these verses all the way to verse 21. So, it says, For no one will ever be made right with God by obeying the law. Verse 17. But suppose we seek. This is very powerful. Listen to this. But suppose we seek to be made right with God through faith in Christ. And then we are found guilty because we have abandoned the law. Will that mean Christ has led us into sin? Absolutely not. This is very powerful. This verse of scripture, its, its depth of meaning is scary to the non-grace person. The, the, the religious person, the depth of meaning of this statement is scary to them. Look at what it says. So let, let me explain it. So let's say that I'm, I'm struggling with a habit. But I have put my faith in Jesus and I've be I'm believing Jesus now. Instead of just struggling in my flesh, I believed Jesus for that aspect of my life, right? I have put my faith in Jesus that the life of God, the life of Jesus is being lived out in me. But just like you put your faith in Jesus for healing, I find myself struggling still with that, but I'm declaring and I'm confessing and I'm doing whatever in the natural I need to do. All that is true. But my faith is in Jesus. I'm no longer just trying to live by the law. I'm living by the Spirit now, not by the law. I'm trusting Jesus that the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus is setting me free, is making me free from the law of sin and death. I'm trusting Jesus that there is a manifestation of that Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. All of this is going on. I am endeavoring to live holy by faith instead of by works. But then I am found to still have some issues. I am found to still be struggling with something. He says, does that mean that Christ is a minister of sin? Say, God forbid. 
In other words, you are not a sinner because you are still struggling with something. You are not a sinner because you are not perfect. No. And it says, if I am still, the, the, the New Living Translation says, if I am found uh, 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 to be guilty. But literally in the Greek, it said, if I am perceived as guilty, if I am perceived as a sinner. In other words, you should not be perceived as a sinner either by yourself. You should not look at yourself as a sinner because you are struggling with something. No. You should not look at yourself. You are not a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner. Now you've been saved by grace. Now you are righteous and now you are holy. And you need to perceive yourself as such. You need to see yourself as such. And you you should not allow anyone to make you feel any different. Does that mean you continue in sin that grace may abound? We've settled that many, many, uh, you know, covered in scripture already. God forbid. No, we don't continue in sin. But the same way this other person is, is, is uh, have something, you know, he, he, God is dealing with. Nobody is perfect, right? We are all a progress. Some, we are on a journey, all right? So some of, some, of, some of them are weights. God says stop watching too much TV or stop watching such, this, uh, this kind of movie or that kind of movie. And so that's what God is dealing with you on. You don't do it in your own strength. You put your faith in Jesus. And the way you receive healing and the way you receive prosperity, you receive holiness. And, you, and it's still that same life. The life of God in you deals with sickness. The life of God in you deals with poverty. The life of God in you deals with sin. And so it's still that same life manifested in your body. And so you put your faith in Jesus. Like Paul said, I, the life I now live, I simply live by putting my faith in Christ Jesus. So as I put my faith in him, Christ lives in me. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. Can you see that? So Christ is living in me as I put my faith in him. And as that process is going on and I am changing and I am being changed from one level of glory to another, one level of the glory of Christ, all that Christ is, has, and can do, from one level of it to another, as I am being changed, please hear that, I am not in the eyes of God a sinner. Because if you say so, then you are making Christ a minister of sin. You are saying that what Christ has done in me was leave me a sinner. No. I stand before God as holy. I stand before God as completely righteous. So this idea that, oh, we are righteous, but we are not holy, is is rubbish. You are righteous, then you are holy. You are righteous, so you are holy. (laughs) Glory to God. And in the eyes of God, and should be so in your eyes. And that was what Paul was saying to Peter. These people may not be perfect, but they've put their faith in Jesus and they are not trying to keep the law. Rather, they are living by faith and the life of God is being manifested in them. Then you cannot treat them as sinners of the Gentiles. You cannot treat, see them as sinners. Is Christ therefore a minister of sin? It's so powerful when you understand it. So he goes on in verse 18. He says, rather, I am a sinner. See what makes you a sinner in the new covenant. I am not a sinner because I fell into a sin. No, you must walk on that mindset. Because when you see yourself as a sinner, you end up continuing in sin. Just like the mechanic who sees himself as someone who can roll in the dirt under the, 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 the car trying to fix the car. He has no problem lying down on the dirt, uh, 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 you know, the, the bare floor, trying to fix a car, getting all dirty because he, of the way he sees himself. But then this other guy is an accountant. He sees himself as an accountant. He has his tie, his shirt, and all of that on. That guy will have a difficulty going under the uh, 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 car to fix anything. You will see him. His car has stopped. He's like he's looking for someone to help because he can't go under there. Because he doesn't see himself that way. When you see yourself as a sinner, you end up sinning. So look at what the true sinner is in the, uh, among believers, those who have received Jesus. He says, rather, I am a sinner if I rebuild the old system of law I already tore down. When a man is trying to be justified by the law, then he has become a sinner. But as long as he seeks to be justified by faith in Christ Jesus... 
and seeks to live out this Christian life by putting his faith in Jesus, even in his imperfections, he's not a sinner. Can you see that? You see why we, we say, don't sing songs like, I'm a sinner saved by grace. No, you were a sinner. Now you've been saved by grace. Now you are a saint saved by grace. You are a saint that became a saint by grace. Songs like, uh, you know, in, in, in uh, Amazing Grace. Lovely song though. But then he says, that saved a wretch like me. Yeah, we understand what he's trying to say. I used to be a wretch, but I'm no longer a wretch. And so, if you're singing that song and you say, save the wretch like me, make sure you tell yourself, saved the wretch I used to be. But I'm no longer a wretch now. And so that's why sometimes I, I prefer to say, saved someone like me. Glory to God. All right, it goes on. Verse 19, for when I tried to keep the law, it condemned me. So I died to the law. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements. This is very important. I stopped trying to not steal, not cheat. You know, that's what is on my mind. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to steal. What happens? You end up stealing. The law ends up condemning you. Oh, I'm not going to sleep around. Oh, I'm not going to fornicate. Oh, I'm not going to lie. Oh, I'm not going to sleep with uh, Chichi. I'm not going to sleep with Tolu. I'm not going to. I'm not going to sleep with. Uh, uh, uh. No. If you're thinking that way, if that's your motivation, if that's what your focus is, you end up doing it. So I stopped trying. He didn't say I'm now going around lawless. We talked about that when we looked at the Book of Romans. We are not lawless. We're just no longer living under the law. We're living by the Spirit. So. It's not talking about how I'm going around now just sleeping around and lying and cheating and killing and whatever. No. He's saying that I'm, my motivation, how I'm... The, the basis for my life is not I'm not going to steal. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sleep around. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... No. I stopped trying to meet all its requirements so that I might live for God. I'm, what I'm now simply doing... It's just living in God's presence, living, being filled by him, being raptured in him, being caught up in his, his awesomeness. I'm just in fellowship with him. That's what now led to the verse 20 we normally quote. You see why I said we need to see context. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. He was saying that following from, I'm no longer trying to keep the law. I'm not trying to meet all its requirements. Rather, this is what I do. I, I, I remind myself, I believe and I stay in that conviction that my old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And how does that living in me happen? How does it happen? How does the life of Christ become manifested in my body? So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God. That's how it happens. Who loved me and gave himself for me. That means we also should stop condemning people. There are people who have put their faith in Jesus and have put their trust in the Son of God and he is walking out from glory to glory, remember? From one level to another. They are not perfect yet. We need to be careful not to condemn them. The same way, because that's what Peter was inadvertently doing uh, uh, um, to those Gentiles. And Paul corrected them. Paul said, no, you don't do that. You don't do that. All right. So we also need to, as we see people growing in Christ and you see somebody doing something he shouldn't be doing and you're like, I, I thought you said you were a Christian. Such statements should never leave your lips. If that person has given his life to Jesus, who are you to judge his faith? I thought you said you were a Christian. No, you should tell him. I know what you did is wrong and I know you probably are feeling condemned, but you are a believer. You have put your faith in Jesus and I want you to know that the life of God is working in you. So as long as you keep on declaring and you keep putting your faith and operating in faith, believe it and keep saying it, you will get out of this whole thing that seems to hold you down right now and seems to tie you down. But I want you to know something. In the eyes of God, you are holy because Christ is not a minister of sin. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not treat the grace of God as meaningless. Can you see that? 
I do not, I do not act like Christ dying and all that means nothing. No. That's why I, I will call that guy holy. That's why I will call myself holy in the midst of all that I'm struggling with. For if keeping the law could make us right with God, then there was no need for Christ to die. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your word today. And we ask that you help us live out this truth in how we deal with others, how we encourage them, how we help them strengthen the knees that are feeble. We give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty and precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you for joining in today. I look forward to have you join me again tomorrow for another edition of the Covenant Light. Till then, remember, you are tremendously loved by God. You are unconditionally loved by Him. And because of that love, you will experience His wisdom, His power, and His favor. So keep living in the consciousness of the love that God has for you. And have a wonderful day today in Jesus' name. Amen.